In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. It's uh, such a joy to have come to today when we come to collate Catherine as our Archdeacon of Lindisfarne and also um, to be made an honorary canon of the Cathedral Church of St. Nicholas. As Catherine said, we, 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 we were trying everything and we really did hope we could have this service at St. Aidan Bambra, uh, but that was not to be. But the, the lovely thing about today is that, my goodness, we would not have had, I can now see we have 122 participants. We would not have been able to do that uh, uh, if we were meeting in person. And that Catherine can be supported from all areas of her life uh, and her previous parishes, it, it's just lovely. I often think that this kind of affair, um, a, a collation in an institution in normal times, but on Zoom too, for the person being licensed, it must be a bit like this is your life because you see people um, from all parts of your life. And so it's a real, real joy uh, to welcome Catherine and Mike to this diocese of Newcastle. We are so deeply full of joy to have you here. We welcome Catherine, of course, as she takes up her new role, praying that she will be given wisdom, courage and discernment in her ministry with us. We also welcome Catherine's family and Catherine's friends and all those who gather today as we now join together in this act of worship as disciples of Christ and as witnesses to his saving love for this diocese and this region. Bishop Christine, it's my great pleasure to present to you Reverend Catherine Sobert Groves to be collated as Archdeacon of Lindisfarne and to be made Canon of the Cathedral Church of St. Nicholas. Dean Jeff, I thank you for your presentation. Let us pray. God, our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son, you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry, each may be an instrument of your love. And give to your servant, Catherine, now to be collated Archdeacon of Lindisfarne, the needful gifts of grace. Through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ruth. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land and a certain man of Bethlehem in Judah went to live in the country of Moab, he and his wife and two sons. The name of the man was Elimelech and the name of his wife, Naomi. And the names of his two sons were Marlon and Kilion. They were Ephrathites from Bethlehem in Judah. They went into the country of Moab and remained there. But Elimelech, the husband of Naomi, died, and she was left with her two sons. These took Moabite wives. The name of one was Orpah, and the name of the other, Ruth. When they had lived there for about ten years, both Marlon and Chilion also died, so that the woman was left without her two sons or her husband. Then she started to return with her daughters-in-law from the country of Moab, for she had heard in the country of Moab that the Lord had had consideration for his people and given them food. So she set out from the place where she had been living, she and her two daughters-in-law, and they went on their way to go back to the land of Judah. But Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, go back each of you to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you, as you have dealt with the dead and with me. 
The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Then she kissed them and they wept aloud. They said to her, no, we will return with you to your people. But Naomi said, turn back, my daughters. Why will you go with me? Do I still have sons in my womb that they may become your husbands? Turn back, my daughters, go your way. For I am too old to have a husband. Even if I thought there was hope for me, even if I should have a husband tonight and bear sons, would you then wait until they were grown? Would you then refrain from marrying? No, my daughters. It has been far more bitter for me than for you. Because the hand of the Lord has turned against me. Then they wept aloud again. Orpah kissed her mother-in-law, but Ruth clung to her. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her gods. Run after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to him. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbours, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who need no repentance. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And so a moment of prayer. Loving God, we thank you for your words. We pray that our hearts, our minds, and our souls will be open to your words through mine this day. For Jesus' sake. Amen. I wonder when you last looked at the book of Ruth. It's tucked away deep in the Old Testament between Judges and Samuel, placed during what's frankly quite a grim time in the history of the people of God. And yet these four little chapters that form the book of Ruth during that time offer a little oasis of love and hope and redemption. A transformative story about a friendship between two individuals that transforms not only their lives, but the lives of many, many others. And a story that tells us a great deal about God, about vocation and about ministry. 
I first came across the Book of Ruth when I was seven years old. I was in Top Infants, as it was called then. And I had a teacher called Miss Rose, who was a very committed uh, Christian. And she used to get us to act out the Bible stories in assembly. And I was asked to play one time the parts of Ruth. And I had to learn those and deliver those extraordinary lines. And there was something about learning them and delivering them that had quite a profound impact on me. You are where you go, I will go. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Where you die, I will die. Not even death will part me from you. And in ways that I couldn't possibly have had the language to articulate, those words stayed with me and really had quite an impact. I took away in a sort of pre-linguistic way a sense of a God who calls, who gives purpose and vocation, of a people of God, who seek to follow him in faith and of life as a journey to be traveled with God in a way that transforms. I had no sense that it would necessarily be easy, but I wanted to grasp this thing of faith that I discovered in this story. And in as much as my understanding allowed, I think I made some kind of decision to seek after the kind of truth and wisdom that was embodied in this story that I saw. In Ruth's case, that step of faith leads to love and new life and a secure future, and we'll come to that in a minute. But there's no guarantee of those things at all when we take that leap of faith. As I joined the journeying people of God in the Archdeaconry of Lindisfarne, I hope to be part of open and fruitful conversations about how faithfully following the God of truth can and does lead through times of anxiety, angst, disappointment, even desolation, as well as joy, fruitfulness, hope and fulfilled promises. But whichever, it's always purposeful when we go on that journey of faith. God has always been in the business of calling individuals on a journey, giving purpose and vocation. You know, it was some years before I realized that the Book of Ruth actually has a really happy ending. But I think the happy ending tells us a couple of really important things about God as well. Firstly, Naomi and Ruth return to Naomi's hometown of Bethlehem. Naomi has no idea what she'll find there, no idea what relatives are still alive. But Ruth falls in love with a man called Boaz. They get married. They have a baby. It turns out that Boaz is a close relative of Naomi's. Many of you will know the story. And because of the complicated laws that existed at that time to do with remarriage and inheritance, the baby that's born is regarded legally as Naomi's son, able to inherit from Naomi's dead husband, able to inherit the family lands, thereby restoring the family line. She has a future. She has security. The baby born in Bethlehem gives new hope, new life, salvation. It's a kind of an Advent story that prefigures the greater Advent story that will come a thousand years later. Naomi's family that was dead is resurrected through this child of hope. God has always been in the business of taking the stuff of which faith is made and generating restoration, redemption and salvation. And the second aspect of the happy ending of that story comes when we think of who that baby is. The baby born to Ruth and Boaz is called Obed. And Obed grows up to be the father of Jesse. And Jesse grows up to be the father of David. David the shepherd boy, David the slayer of Goliath, David the king of Israel. Ruth becomes the great grandmother of David, the king of Israel. From that moment of desolation in the wilderness where neither she nor Naomi knew what lay ahead of them, Ruth's decision to act in faith means that she becomes a vital link in the chain of ancestry that leads through David and on to Jesus himself. But Ruth is a Moabite. Ruth is part of the despised enemy people of the people of God. Way back in Deuteronomy 23, the people of God have told they're not allowed to mix and marry with the Moabites and that anyone that does will be excluded from the assembly of God down to 10 generations. Well, that's clearly a man-made rule because God clearly calls Ruth the Moabite to have this instrumental role in the life of the people of God. And God clearly calls David to be the king anointed by the prophet Samuel. God anoints David through Samuel. 
So King David himself is one part Moabite. God has always been in the business of calling all people to be part of his people. God has always been in the business of inclusion, equality, diversity, and dignity for everyone. I'm mused that if a 21st century writer was chronicling the life of Ruth, he might give it the title, Moabite Lives Matter. So 14 generations later, we come then to our gospel reading and we come to another descendant of Ruth, Jesus himself, descended from David and therefore from Ruth. It's a really well-known gospel parable, so I don't think we need to rehearse it a lot here. The shepherd who goes after the lost sheep and rejoices on finding it. It's the story that shows us that everyone counts. No one doesn't matter. Jesus calls us on a journey of faith to seek out those who are struggling in this at times harsh world. I'm really looking forward to hearing more about what God is doing here in this area, what pioneering journeys he is calling you on here in the Archdeaconry of Lindisfarne. It's not been an easy year here or anywhere, and I don't believe we have some easy months ahead of us here or indeed anywhere. We are currently in the wilderness, so to speak, like Ruth and Naomi, not knowing what lies ahead, but knowing we need to take a decision of faith. Let's choose to follow their descendant Jesus in faith. God, through the spirit of Jesus, will always be in the business of calling us forwards, giving us purpose and vocation, and he is journeying with us. And the choices we make in faith now, like the choice Ruth made way back then, will be made of the stuff that God can use for restoration, redemption and salvation. Amen. Thank you, Catherine. I think we will hold uh, in our hearts the powerful, powerful message of hope which you've shared with us. We now come to the legal part of this service of collation today. And um, this happens these oh, these these um these 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 words the, the declaration of assent and the oaths are sworn every time uh, a deacon or priest uh, or indeed a bishop assumes a new office so it happens at ordination and it happens thereafter and it's particularly i think um appointed for an archdeacon to be uh, making the Declaration of Assent and Oaths because one of your duties, Catherine, as you will know, will be to witness uh, those in the Archdeaconry of Lindisfarne making their Declaration of Assent and Oaths in the future as they are admitted to new posts, new, new ministries. So today it's your turn, but in the future you'll be witnessing uh, this moment. It's, it's for me quite important um, because what these Declaration and Oaths say is that as members of the Church of England, we're not free just to choose the bits that we like and, 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 and have an idiosyncratic um, uh, sect, if you like. We are a church. And particularly, I think, in, in the notion of the oath of allegiance to the sovereign, we recognize that we're not just a club. We are the Church of England for the people of England in as much as they wish to receive that ministry. So in amongst all the legalese, I think there's something quite important here. The Church of England is part of the one holy, Catholic and apostolic church, worshipping the one true God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. It professes the faith uniquely revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds. Which faith the church is called upon to proclaim afresh in each generation? Led by the Holy Spirit, it has borne witness to Christian truth in its historic formularies, the 39 Articles of Religion, the Book of Common Prayer, and the ordering of bishops, priests, and deacons. 
Catherine, in the declaration you are about to make, will you affirm your loyalty to this inheritance of faith as your inspiration and guidance under God in bringing the grace and truth of Christ to this generation and making him known to those in your care? I, Catherine Anne Sauerbert Groves, about to be admitted and collated to the Archdeaconry of Lindisfarne in the Diocese of Newcastle, do so affirm and accordingly declare my belief in the faith which is revealed in the Holy Scriptures and set forth in the Catholic creeds and to which the historic formularies of the Church of England bear witness. And in public prayer and administration of the sacraments, I will use only those forms of service which are authorised or allowed by canon. Catherine, um, do you have your Bible ready in your right hand? For the oh, please, one second, I do apologise. <laughs> That's okay. As an archdeacon, you will get used to reminding people about that. <laughs> <laughs> there was going to be something, wasn't there? I do now have my Bible. I couldn't, I couldn't let an archdeacon not have the Bible in their right hand. It's wonderful. Thank you, Catherine. I, Catherine Anne Sauber Groves do swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, her heirs and successors according to law. So help me God. I, Catherine Anne Sauber Groves, do swear by Almighty God that I will pay true and canonical obedience to the Lord Bishop of Newcastle and her successors in all things lawful and honest. So help me God. Thank you, Catherine. And now, normally we would sign the same piece of paper but I believe we're each going to sign um, the oaths of a separate piece of paper, and then we'll, we'll, we'll pull them together in the file. So I'm now going to sign to say that you've made these oaths today. And if you want to sign too, if you happen to have a pen, if you don't, you can do it after service. Wonderful. Having made these declarations and sworn these oaths as required by law, Catherine may now be collated as Archdeacon of Lindisfarne. So let's pray for God's blessing on Catherine and on her husband, Mike, that they may be strengthened and sustained by the spirit and that her ministry may enrich the mission of the church in this diocese. Almighty God, whose Holy Spirit equips the church with a rich variety of gifts, grant that we may use them to bear witness to Christ by lives built on faith and love. Bless Catherine and Mike in their life here and make all of us ready to live the gospel and eager to fulfill our vocation that we may share with all your church in the joy of eternal life. Amen. I'm now going to read uh, the legal document which I will be sending to Catherine. I would normally be placing it in her hands at this point, but it will arrive in her hands courtesy of Royal Mail. Christine, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Newcastle, to our beloved in Christ, Catherine Ann Saubert Groves, greeting. We do hereby collate and admit you to the office of Archdeacon of Lindisfarne within our diocese and jurisdiction, which belongs to our collation in right of our bishopric. And we do duly and canonically institute you into the said archdeaconry and invest you with all the rights and duties of the said archdeaconry and assign you a stall in the choir of our Cathedral Church, Newcastle, and a place and a voice in the College of Canons in accordance with the statutes of the same. Saving to us and our successors our Episcopal rights and the dignity and honor of our said Cathedral Church. In testimony whereof we have hereunto set our hand and caused our Episcopal seal to be affixed this 14th day of November in the year of our Lord 2020 and in the sixth year of our consecration.
Catherine, enter into this ministry, which is both yours and mine. Walk in peace and joy, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is good, render to no one evil for evil, strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Catherine is now collated and is our Archdeacon of Lindisfarne, but uh, we now, uh, Catherine, because she is to be a canon of the cathedral, uh, now has to make a declaration to observe the cathedral statutes. Um, and this is witnessed by Dean Jeff. I, Catherine Ann Saubert Groves, clerk in holy orders, declare that I will observe and keep all such regulations, statutes, ordinances and rules of the Cathedral Church of St Nicholas as shall be agreed by the Bishop and the Chapter and published by lawful authority. That I will faithfully and prayerfully carry out the duties of Archdeacon of Lindisfarne. That I will be ready to assist the Bishop of the Diocese with my presence and counsel whenever and wherever she may reasonably require this of me and that I will willingly and wholeheartedly play my part in furthering the ministry of the church in this diocese. People of this diocese, I ask you to welcome Catherine as Archdeacon of Lindisfarne and Canon of the Cathedral Church of St. Nicholas. And for this, please, can everybody be unmuted and we'll have a wonderful cacophony of sound as we say together, uh, when I introduce it, I'll, I'll, I will welcome you, we'll all welcome you, and then um, we we'll do what we normally do, which is to clap, and it'll be a marvellous noise, a joyful noise. <laughs> <laughs> so if everybody's unmuted, that's marvellous. Catherine, we welcome you. We welcome, we welcome you. you. Come you. In the name of the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a clap. <laughs> Give her a loud clap. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a wonderful moment, and um, it, it's a very special moment in the life and story of our diocese. And so the first welcome is going to be given by Dean Jeff the Dean of Newcastle. Catherine, it's, it's my great pleasure on behalf of the chapter and uh, colleagues and friends in the College of Canons and at the Cathedral community to, uh, to welcome you to your new role among us. You come already, as you've said in your sermon, uh, during challenging times for the country, for our communities, for, on a global threat, really, uh, as well as political machinations abroad and even at home and economic struggles. Uh, we add to those in the cathedral uh, also many challenges in our context. Our cathedral doors are closed shut, uh, not simply because of COVID, but also because we're in the middle of a major uh, renovation, the largest refurbishment in the cathedral since 17. 77 uh, and we are grateful and looking forward to be able to show you around the works so <coughs> a hard hat but my guess is a hard hat's not a bad thing for an archdeacon to have hang on hang on to most of the time but it's for a different capacity among us we look forward to meeting you in the cathedral properly <coughs> and you meeting all our folk there and i wanted in my welcome really to uh, to offer you a prayer which we use as a newcastle welcome it's got a slight irony because to use this prayer suggests the doors would be open and I would love to have done this by, by walking you into the cathedral and letting you see it all, but not possible today. But metaphorically, I hope you'll take that as a, our real welcome. So, in the name of the sacred trinity, we at the cathedral who found a, in that place a home, 
today bid you welcome. With the Father's love, we will open wide our doors. In the name of his Son, we will invite you to enter. Empowered by the Spirit, we will extend to you our friendship. May we welcome you as Christ himself. And through God's good grace, may you see Christ in us. Welcome. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Jeff. And now I think it's probably true to say there is no one more delighted to see Catherine now collated as Archdeacon of Lindisfarne than the acting, previous <laughs> acting Archdeacon of Lindisfarne and Archdeacon of Northumberland, Mark Rowe. Archdeacon Mark. Uh, Catherine, there is a, there may be a huge degree of self-interest in the enthusiasm uh, of, of my welcome, but a hugely, hugely warm welcome to the Office of Archdeacon, which we share. Um, I want to extend a welcome on behalf of our team, really, a welcome on behalf of Catherine, uh, who serves us both as PA uh, and the current Archdeacon team of Rob, Rachel and Benjamin. And it's that real sense of team um, I want to welcome you into, uh, that we are sharing together um, in the work that God has called us to. And so it's a, a very warm welcome, um, not just from, from me, but from all of us, lay and ordained uh, across the Archdeaconry of Northumberland. Uh, we, we work together uh, in, in so much. And uh, I'm very much looking forward uh, to working with you already done a little bit of that um, in the last few days but we're looking forward to, to working with you uh, and sharing uh, in the joy of the good news uh, the work of the kingdom and the love of God uh, welcome to you uh, and a welcome to Mike uh, uh, as well and looking forward uh, to uh, seeing you both around about the place uh, you do not need a passport to come into this Archdeaconry. You are very, very, very warmly welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it's that you. great sense of team that I've experienced already on the, the days that we've been together already. It's, I'm, I'm really looking forward to working together with the whole team. Yeah. And um, yes, it, 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 well, we, the joy in our hearts um, is greater even than yours, I suspect. We're so looking forward to it, Catherine. Um, and now I'm going to ask uh, Louise Taylor Kenyon, Area Dean for Bamborough and Glendale, to welcome you on behalf of the Lindisfarne Archdeaconry Area Deans. So, Catherine, I'm so sorry we're not in St Aidan's Bamborough this afternoon, but uh, as as uh, Bishop Christine said, it has allowed lots more people to be to be present today, which is wonderful. And I'm delighted to welcome you to the diocese on behalf of of the, um, well, all the area deans, but particularly from the, the Lindisfarne Archdeaconry. One of the things that has happened during this period is that I think we've all got to know each other a lot better um, in all sorts of ways, which has really um, brought us together as a, as a team of people who have a much better understanding of what's going on in our different individual areas. And we're all really looking forward to working, to getting to know you, to introducing you to this unique and wonderful patch of the northeast of England, um, to working with you on our common task of transforming lives through growing hope and growing faith, um, and just introducing you to the wonderful people in this diocese. You are very welcome. Thank you very much. I look forward to meeting you all properly in due course. Thank you, Louise. Um, and now I'm going to invite uh, David Ratcliffe, lay chair for Hexham Deanery, to give a welcome on behalf of lay chairs. Hello, Catherine. Um, on behalf of uh, our uh, informed, but uh, um, informal, but, but very active group of lay chairs across, um, across the diocese, I want to give you a, a warm welcome. Uh, we're excited at this moment to be thinking that we will be able to share this land and share its lay people with you. Um, and as we seek as a group to define the role of lay chair in the value and mission of the diocese, uh, we look forward enormously to working with you. Uh, some of us in this extraordinary year are kind of almost beyond our sell-by date, uh, <laughs> which should have happened much earlier in the year, okay. uh, but I'm sure there will still be enough lay chairs uh, to be able to meet and greet you personally at the moment when it comes. Welcome. 
Um, I'm going to now just um, uh, have one extra welcome that's not on our service sheet. Um, and I'm going to invite my husband, Roger, to welcome Catherine, your husband, Mike. Uh, may they be partners in long suffering, <laughs> <laughs> knowing what it is to be married uh, to people like us. Roger. Right, thank you. Well, Mike, it's uh, great to have you around. Uh, it's uh, going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I'm talking on behalf of all the clergy spouses here. We occasionally meet up in a pub or something for a beer now and again. Obviously, it hasn't happened just lately, but uh, it will resume. Uh, you may be slightly surprised, having moved up here, not to have found yet any uh, snow or floods. Do not fret, they will come. And uh, just as surely, the churches will reopen and the pubs will reopen, and then we'll all get back to having a jolly good time. Welcome. Thank you very much. This was totally unexpected. Um, I'd have put another jumper on if I'd have known, um, just to uh, take the chill off. But uh, thank you very much indeed. And I look forward to uh, joining you for a, for a pint um, sometime in the hopefully not too distant future. Thank you for the welcome. And now, um, most of us not standing, um, we share the peace with one another. We are the body of Christ. In the one spirit, we were all baptized in the one body. Let us pursue then all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We can do metaphorical bumps and sorts of whatever we do. <laughs> uh, that's wonderful. And now I'm going to invite the Archdeacon of Lindisfarne to lead us in our prayers. Thank you. Let us pray. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. As we begin a new chapter in our life together, let us call to mind those for whom Christ bids us have a care. For the Church of Christ, for Christine, our Bishop, and the whole people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord our God. For the nations of the world and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord our God. For this diocese and for our neighbours and friends, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord our God. For those who are sick and those who are suffering, for those who are sad or lonely, for those who are anxious or in any kind of need, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord our God. For those who are poor and disadvantaged and oppressed of this and every land, for those who are unemployed, those who are destitute, those who are abused and those who have nobody to pray for them by name, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord, our God. For those who are dying and those who mourn, together with those whom we entrust to God in hope, let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer, O oh Lord, our God. And let us pray together with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, 
forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And so we come to the end of this service. It's just been incredible to look at the list of participants, go through the screens. Um, and, and for those of you that have been following the chat, thank you, uh, Archdeacon Bob from South of the River for your greetings. I know that Catherine will be looking forward to working with you as we share our lives together across our dioceses. Um, I'm conscious in this time of All Saints Tide and of remembrance that we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. And today I feel the person who would have been here um, uh, with, with such joy is of course um, our wonderful Carol Wistenholm who was our chair of the House of Laity. And so we, we know we are surrounded by her and other saints and we hold her in our prayers that she may rest in peace and rise in glory. And we pray for her family. And we pray with deep joy at this new stage in the history of Lindisfarne Archdeaconry. And I can't tell you how much, because you are the first female Archdeacon of Lindisfarne, Catherine, and I can't tell you what a joy it is to have um, a fellow woman in the senior staff team. Thank you. It's just lovely. And so it's with joy that we ask God to bless us. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, In the name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.